Today I'm going to spend a moment to tell you about MGFs. I'm going to do it in basic detail and sweeping all kind of technical details to the comment section at the end. First we need to know what moments are. For random variable x, the first population moment is expected value of x. The second population moment is expected value of x squared and so on. So the kth population moment is the expected value of x to the power of k. Now some books make a distinction between uncentered moments and centered moments. Centered moments begins with the second moment and centered meaning that your random variable is, is looking at a difference of your random variable from the mean. Hence the word centered. Believe it or not, MGFs have something to do with these moments. Now recall that the expected value of x is the population mean. And recall that this expression here is the variance of your random variable. And notice they both involve expected values of your random variable. So basically moments tell us things about kind of features of the x through its distribution. We know about x through knowing stuff about the distribution, the features of the distribution of x. So the population mean is the typical value, the variance of x gives us the spread about the mean. Uh, those two are the most common one. Let's look at this one. Skewness measures like the degree of symmetry or asymmetry in your distribution. And it's given involves, you can see power of three, so it involves the third moments as well as the second moments and first moments. Kurtosis tells us about the shape or thickness at the tail end of your distribution. So it's looking at um, questions of how frequent or unfrequent are observations that are likely to happen far from the mean. Next we can talk about the definition of an MGF. I'm going to do this pretty informally. So for random variable x, MGF is given by this function here. And provided it exists for some t, this expectation exists for some t around zero. That's a technical bit. We'll leave that to the end. You don't need to know it to do calculations. At the newbie level, Specifically, when x is continuous, it's given by this, and when x is discrete, it's given by this. Okay, so let's focus on the discrete case. Where do I get this formula from? Well, it comes from using the result, this result here. I take some function g of x, and x is discrete, we're thinking, right? Then, the formula says it's equal to the sum of this g to the x times your property function. And if x is continuous, replace the sum by an integral. So that's what I've used here. The Function g here is going to be the e exponent function. So one of the uses, in fact, usually it's the first use that we're taught as newbies, is that the moment generating function can be used to compute these um, moments. So let's look at an example, a discrete random variable. I'm going to do two examples. I'm going to, do, I'm going to show you the discrete random variable and then po give you pointers for the continuous random variable case. So let's say x we'll consider x as Bernoulli. Okay, that's the uh, parameter pi. So here's a probability function. One, usually denotes success. That happens with a chance of pi and zero standing for failure. One minus pi, so pi or minus pi adds up to one. That's cool. We know the result for a Bernoulli. The mean, the expected value of x is pi. And the variance of x is pi times, or well, minus pi which you can read as probability of success times probability of failure. First, let's compute these two using the kind of standard way that we've seen before, MGFs. That's using the formulas. Expected value of x is equal to sum of the outcome times source of probability. Okay, so that's 1 times pi plus 0 times 1 minus pi. Gives me pi, yep. Yeah. To calculate the variance, we need to expect the value of x squared. So using this result here, my g function is now the squared function. I square each outcome and times it by probability. 1 squared times pi plus 0 squared times 1 minus pi is going to give me pi again. So the variance then is going to be equal to this. Take out the common factor. Don't leave it as keep it because it's more interpretable. Take out the common factor pi and there. Okay, so how can I do this now using the MGF OK, everyone, this is the result we need to know. For the MGF to compute the kth moment, we do get hold of the MGF, um, find the derivative with respect to t, and do it k number of times, and then set t to 0 in that order. 
and then that gives us expected value of uh, x to the k. So it'll become more clear once we go through this example. So I take hold of my definition and here's the moment. So first of all when x is 1 it's e to the t times 1 is e to the t times pi gives me this expression and then set x to 0 okay e to the 0 is 1 okay so it's 1 times 1 minus pi is 1 minus pi it's very easy when you do this to forget this 1 minus pi because people think e to the 0 oh it's 0 now how do we get the first uh, now we're going to start using the word moments okay so let's look at this thing this expected value of x is actually the first moment and we know the variance of x is actually equal to the second moment minus the first moment squared so we're using moment terminology now so we would definitely know we're dealing with MGFs so what it says is different to get the first moment differentiate this MGF with respect to t once okay it gives me this and then set t to 0 okay that'll be pi times e to the 0 which is 1 so that's pi for the variance we need the second moment so let's differentiate this thing again with respect to t well it's easy peasy it's actually going to remain the same thing and so to get the second moment we set t to 0 and that comes up to pi and then hence the result okay let's just go back over that because there's some comments about this first of all guys and important comments when you do your homework or working these things through note that MGF is a function of t not x so in your final answer it should only involve t and the parameters there shouldn't be any random variables in there otherwise it you know it wouldn't be a variable it wouldn't be a function of uh, t only however notice that because you can see there's actually two variables going on here when you compute the expectation is with respect to x and not t let's go back to def when you are looking at a discrete case summing, doing this calculation you are summing over the values possible values of x not t uh, I don't understand how you could do that but some people manage to do it somehow uh, but it's meaningless third thing is when we are differentiating them Jeff we're differentiating with respect to t not x t because as clearly written here keeps saying that mgf is a function of t hence it's important to write it you know in the brackets stick a t there so you remind yourself a thing is a function of t when you're differentiating you differentiate with respect to that variable okay hold on a minute now time out got a question on shadman why can't you differentiate the mgf simply and substitute t to zero to get the value of expected value of x okay what it means is is it possible to interchange the uh, expectation with differentiation so let's try it get the MGF okay that's what this is so considering X is discrete all right now instead of doing the expectation first and then doing the differentiation let's differentiate the thing first so here's the derivative of this thing differentiate this thing okay well that thing comes to this okay and so then the expected value of x is set t to 0 and so here but this is the definition of the expected value of x when x is discrete so it's basically got us back to this method 1 so we uh, haven't actually got very far have we if we did that by doing it the other way you could see that we get rid of the x altogether and then follows through also uh, interchanging expectation and differentiation uh, you gotta be careful that at the newbie level we can kind of just forget it, just kind of just do it. But know that um, it's uh, it's not always true that the expected value of a derivative is equal to the derivative of some expectation. So in other words, really we should check conditions such that we can interchange these two guys. Uh, so a similar example is when we take um, expectation through the bracket of a sum of random variables. Okay, we just assume that we could just do that but there's some conditions needed okay so that's the discrete case done for a continuous example just um, I put uh, I've done a few of them on and uploaded them to YouTube I put it in the description box of some of the uh, MGFs I've done for continuous random variables some of the standard ones okay so as newbies that's kind of what we need to know now would you believe it it has some more use as the MGF actually uh, maybe more more important uses is to find the distribution of functions of the random variable so finding the distribution of a sum of independent random variables 
in other words expression of the t form x1 plus x2 plus x3 all the way to xn where each of these x's are independent and follow some kind of distribution well then what's the distribution of the sum of those independent variables another use is to you know, find out something more about the distribution of a linear function of independent random variables so this is a form if I know variable x then what's the what's the distribution and what can I say more about the moments of a linear function of it so let's look at an example of this one say I have a transformation a linear transformation on x which is a Bernoulli from above so a and b are any real numbers so you can see that this corresponds to a straight line so y is related to x through like a straight line this is what we call a linear transformation and the result here is right here then the mgf of this new random variable the transformed one is given that by this expression here and if it looks ugly here's the proof Okay, for people interested in proofs it's right here I think it's quite clear but you work it through I'm just interested now talking about using this thing to find say the mean of y using this uh, but first just as above let's just use it to do it directly using the expectation we won't use the expectation using the summation from first principles we'll just kind of use the expectation rules for the first method so expected value of y so expectation of this finite sum, take expectation through the brackets okay, a is a constant so it comes out with expectation sign, expected value of x, x is with Bernoulli, we know the expectation of a, a Bernoulli is pi, there okay that's short, okay con contrast to the MGF method okay so let's look at this what the MGF says, method says is exponent b to the t, okay I've got it right here times the MGF for your random variable x which is Bernoulli and you could see this, this is what we're careful about. Where you see t, it says, in that MGF for the Bernoulli, replace t by a t. Okay, so here's the MGF for the Bernoulli. You see that t, replace it by a t. Okay, that, that one's fine, so that's all. So replace it by a t. Then we'll just tidy this thing up a bit, and that is the MGF. Okay, and now we want to find the expected value x, the first moment, so just differentiate the thing once blam and expectation value of expected value of x is given by the first this uh, moment with uh, uh, t set to zero okay this mgf first is mgf with t set to zero and there we get the same result um, so careful with this thing here what about what this says here so when we came to differentiate notice we differentiate respect to t we don't differentiate respect to a t i.e. we don't try to substitute a t as some other variable s and differentiate respect to s and the importance is by using a subscript here to, to keep track of what variables I'm talking about this is related to this okay through this expression and we are wanting to find the derivative of this guy which is a function of t that's uh, whereas this is a function of a t so when I got this expression here for the MGF it no, it's a function of t not a t so I differentiate with respect to t okay so hopefully that will get you through the exam and now let's just talk about um, some comments okay first not all random variables have an MGF for example the t distribution which you all know about does not have an MGF and the other popular example cited is the Cauchy distribution next we've been concentrating on MGFs for like one variable or linear transformation of one variable but note we can do MGFs for joint random variables or conditional random variables just like you have uh, in probability marginal probability conditional probability joint probability because you're interested in like joint events or conditional events okay next MGF identifies the distribution of the random variable and here we recall remember in the definition we said that condition for the MGF to exist it's got to exist around t is zero okay so this means like suppose we have two random variables and we find that x and y and we find we work through that x has a uh, MGF and y is an MGF and though both those MGFs are the same then we can say that x and y have the same distribution it doesn't mean that they are the same variable for example here x could be Poisson the rate parameter 2 
y would be a Poisson of rate parameter 2. OK, so how about the other way around? Uh, MGF so identifies the random variable, but and so MGF that spits out uh, two, two MGFs which are the same will give out the same expected values. But how about, say, you've got um, next thing here. Moments alone do not identify the distribution of random variables. So it means, like, say we've got two random variables, x and y again, and we calculate the moments, like, you know, k th to first, second, third, all the way to k for moment, and they match. That alone does not ident say that they must come from the same distribution, i.e., like a Poisson with a rate parameter of 3. Unless, dot, 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 yeah, some um, things, well, if they come from the same MGFs, but that's going back to here. Or if the random variables, both random variables, x and y, have bounded support. And then finally, sometimes the math is simplified by working on the log of the MGF. Such a thing is known as the cumulant generating function. Okay, so thanks for sharing the moment with me today on this, and good luck.